Oh yeah, it's going to be a great matchup. We got both teams undefeated, so we're looking in for a great matchup here. Nobody heard it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, y'all missed the best intro ever. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. This OBS. OBS just, just making me look bad. It's all right. It's all right. It wouldn't be a CGL cast without a good old classic skunk moment. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, as I was saying, week five, two four and oh teams. Uh, it's, uh, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, should be in for a great matchup. Hopefully we go five maps. I'd love to see that. Just down to the wire. Good old Overwatch is what I'm looking forward to. Indeed. And let's take a let's take a look at our rosters here while I try to dial in my audio. Ray, why don't you uh, give a rundown of who we're going to see on the battlefield? Yeah, so uh, looking at the Incendia uh, uh, lineup, we have Justice and Ned filling out the DPS line, as well as Metalidi and Duratan filling out the tank line, and then Arrow Pulse and Soma filling out the support line. And keep in mind, guys, these are just pictures, not necessarily going to play those heroes exactly, just trying to give you guys an idea of what positions everyone plays. Yeah, precisely. We don't know exactly what compositions they're going to run out with, but... We, we do know, I mean, you know, it's a good representation of who the flex DPS is, who the hit scan is, main tank, off tank, etc. Uh, with that said, let's go check out the other side. Lucky 13 coming in 4-0. and oh, Have only dropped one map so far. You're going to have a flaming and Keed putting the hurt down. Ink, Shadow on the front line with Tritons and Sightons. Keeping the team alive from the supports. I mean, this is this is gonna be a good clash. This could be a preview of what we uh, expect to see once we come postseason, especially if the teams keep up with this caliber of play that they've started with. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's kind of like you know, if anyone you know watches you know regular sports like uh, basketball, football. You know, you see two teams that are high caliber gonna be playoff teams, gonna be championship level teams. They're just meeting earlier in the season, and it's just a good preview for what may be to come in the future. Let's take a look at our map pool. Speaking of the future, in the near future, we're going to see our set maps for week number five. Nepal, Hollywood, Hanamura, and Watchpoint, Gibraltar. Uh, this is a great little map pool. I, it's good to see uh, WPG back in the lineup. I always love watching this map. It's a good, good test of uh, the versatility from our teams and their compositions. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> just with Sanctum alone... Uh on nepal you can even get a variety true. of comps so like true. just all these maps just have varying different comps we can see here so it's going to be awesome to see what these teams want to bring out today well, with that all said let's uh let's give our trusty host big shout out to munching for hosting our room today really appreciate that it's uh one less thing i gotta worry about on my plate so you know maybe we can get some of this right we're gonna give them the ready we're going to see if we can get this thing started. Um, I'm actually uh, quite anxious to see what these two teams bring to the table. Uh, coming in 4-0. Oh, I'm anxious to learn where the strengths are going to lie. I mean, is it, is it the DPS? Is it uh, you know, is it the front line holding down the fort? I'm anxious to see the the flavor, the, the styles of these two 4-0 oh squads. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think um, definitely I think when it comes to Sanctum on Nepal, that can give you a good idea of who's running the show. Are the are they running a double shield comp where the tanks are just getting a lot of poke damage and really carrying the team? Or are the DPS going on flank routes and just distracting the other team and really carrying the fights? I think Sanctum will give you a good idea of who's really carrying the team fights. Well, as we get underway here. Looks like we're starting off on Village, or Shrine, rather. Shrine, yep. Yep, yep. Village is the other the other one. Beautiful <clears> map. <throat> very close yeah. quarters, very brawl-centric. Yeah, the teams 
ten if the teams are going to stick this comp looks like both sides are going with the classic ball diva comp with the tracer Farah. i mean it's a similar comp to what you see sometimes in owl uh you know the ball diva causes a lot of distraction while the Farah can rain for rain free in the skies and do everything she needs to do just output massive damage this puts a lot of pressure on your dps uh, DPS is really the stars of the show in these kind of compositions and have to get work done uh, for your, for the squad to succeed, for your team to succeed. And there it is, Flamin already landing the shots, takes Soma out of the sky with a tether cut. Justice at a severe disadvantage in this fight. Justice goes down, Flamin will have free reign on the point. But back on the point, it is Duratan finding the kills. And the tanks starting to duel it out as the teams try to look to surround each other, find the advantage. Dirtan's going to get demacked, but Ink does as well. Tit for tat so far between our two squads. Nobody's picked up the point. Yeah, it's a good brawl going on point. I'd be curious to see how much value the Lucio is going to get in this comp. You don't tend to see, I mean, when this style of comp is ran, it's tend to not be with the Lucio. You tend to run it with a Ana like the other, like uh, Insidia is or with a Brig. So I'd be curious to see how much value this Lucio will get. Ooh, nice pulse, and that was kind of one of the points I was going to get into, is the Ana definitely puts out more healing, but is a lot more susceptible to the dive, to things like those pulse bombs from the Tracer, whereas the Lucio could be a lot more elusive. Already getting a DPS swap as Justice is going to head over to the Sombra here for this next engage. Yeah, I mean, that's where they're trying to counter the ball. You hack the ball, he can't go anywhere, and then your team can just corral up on the ball. I mean, that's they're, they're just trying to run the same comp, but with a DPS counter to their ball. Right now, Flamin' is putting the rocks, rockets down, keeping Incendia at bay. Nice direct. Gets Dirtan's attention. Dirtan comes flying right up for him. Flamin's got to back it out of there with 33 health. Tritons and Sightons down. No supports. Left for Lucky 13 on this objective. And it's left the door wide open for Incendia to move in here, find some great picks. I don't even think those mines are going to stop him from flipping this point. No, it, it definitely won't. The mines were kind of like a last, last stitch effort to try and buy, buy some more time, but it's not going to work. Uh, I mean, they can just farm some transcendence now that they're on the Zen here for Incendiary, which, I mean, I, I'm surprised they weren't running Zen to begin with. It works really well in this comp. You get the Discord orbs on the right people, and it just allow Ball and Diva because they're alone. They don't output like a huge ton amount of damage, but you get Discord orb on, they can be deadly together. Oh, truly lethal indeed. Oh, Justice nearly misses the manual hack on to Shadow. He's going to get that time, though. That is a walking old battery. Shadow's trying to go high. It ain't coming in for the peel. Sound barrier even used. And somehow Shadow is still in this fight. Able to get healed up, but lost a couple reinforcements around them. It's a plus one to Incendia on this objective right now. Now they're hunting down Ink. The pilot diva is lasting longer than I expected, but still won't last that long. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, they were just trying to stagger her for as long as possible. But I mean, the good thing is uh, Lucky 13 was able to force out the Transcendent, so they don't have that for this next fight, especially when they have Barrage online. So that that was definitely, you know, I know you lost the fight, but you at least feel good that you're able to drag out Transcendence. Yeah, not, not entirely bad. Justice did get a nice little opening pick on a Tritons. Just bought themselves an extra 15% on this point. Now has EMP to look to close out what could be a final fight scenario. Another manual hack on to Tritons. Justice just hunting down this Mercy. He's got a bounty out for Tritons right now. Going for the manual hack. Ooh, another oh, good shit. manual hack. Oh, shit. That was in a lot of trouble. Yeah, we self-destruct thrown into the back right-hand corner. The support's able to dive safe to EMP. Picks up four. And then drops the pulse. Ooh. Lands the stick. Both DPS fall at the hand of Ned's Tracer. And Incendia have brought this thing all the way back. Just a little bit of cleanup. And they're going to open up strong with their opening round. Yeah, I mean, very impressive. As soon as they swap to the Zen, just the amount of work they put in. That's why this composition loves the Zenyatta. The Discord orbs and even the Harmony orbs can come clutch on like a Brig to get some healing off her. A Tracer can help win the Tracer duel if she has a Harmony orb on her. Just the value that Zen gets in this comp is not understated oh that's one of my favorite like as a tracer you see a discord and you've got a harmony and you feel just like super powered uh, power level 9000 here for ned right now and this all continues lucky 13 gonna 
fight this thing out for as long as they can, but inevitably that overtime wick burns down. 1-0 for Incendia to start things off. Yeah, like we said, very impressive. Uh, I mean, you know, they were getting beat at first. They made the necessary adjustments. They went to the Sombra. The Sombra getting the manual hacks on the ball were just huge. Even on the Mercy, sometimes he was hunting down Tritons very well. And then, like we said, the Discord orbs and the Harmony orbs, the value is just insane that Zenyatta hits. So they, they made the necessary adjustments in order to really turn that around and take the first round here on Nepal. We were talking about how important that adaptability mm -hmm. is, and Incendia is showing it off for us in strides. Now we're on to Sanctum, the round that you said could really put their versatility to the test. We're going to get double shield uh, for Rumble Lucky 13, Incendia coming out with the Orisa Diva. Yeah, um, an another comp that you see originated in Overwatch. It's one of those comps that was invented to kind of deal with the ball diva with the Fera likes. Uh, we'll have to see how well they will do here. I mean, they are running double hit scan. I think they were expecting the Fera on this map on the side of Lucky 13. So let's see if the Ashen Soldier can just keep the Fera at bay. I mean, it was a good guess. Is Justice indeed taken to the skies with the Egyptian rocket launcher wielding hero? So far, it's put down a lot of work. I mean, you can see 66% towards that opening barrage. Uh, and picking up that opening pick. Saiten's going down. What a huge pick indeed. And this brawl for the high ground. Well, might just tilt to Lucky 13 as they drop the end matrix down. Shadow is able to move in and pick up a couple kills. Flaming cleaning up the rest. Yeah, that was uh, nicely done. That they help. What they want to do in that double shield comp is hold their ground there over on the, the pseudo high ground, I guess you want to call it. Uh, I mean, it's not like an obvious high ground, but it's high ground for sure for double shield. They held their ground really well, and because they held their ground, they were able to wait for the team, the wait for Incendiate to come to them. They did, and they popped the window and just wipe them. It was incredible. And now Shadow has this Gravitic Flux ready to go. I, one of my favorite engagement ultimates, just taking the entire opposing team down, but the barrage over the top before Shadow can pull the trigger is able to find that kill. Res available, but Shadow's kind of poking out there. You've got Durotan trying to protect it. No, cannot quite deny Res. Shadow back on their feet. Bob on the battlefield. And now the response, the war drums, the supercharger out from Meta, Metal Eddy. There finally comes the Flux combined with the extra damage from that big Omnic Butler. And despite losing control during that fight, Lucky 13 are going to take it right back. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say uh, when we were talking about the res and, you know, them having to back up. I mean, I was going to say, you know, going on Incendiary, they got the point. They were able to get some percentage. But again, Lucky 13 is being very patient. That's what you got to do in this double shield comp. You don't want them coming to you. You need to back up and get as much space as you can when you have to. And just be patient because you're going to out poke them in this comp. And they're doing just that. Now, it's going to go into the Blackout Brawl, the Somber Reaper Brawl Comp with the Lucio and the Moira. Just look at this, look how fast they engage in, just bowling over her. Lucky 13, they did not catch the number on that truck, Ray. Yeah, I, and Insidia is really good at dissecting what changes they need to make to counter what the other team's running. What Double Shield doesn't want you to do is get up in your in their face and brawl. They want to take space. And what they did was just, okay, we're going to go right at you with Sombra Reaper. And you saw how fast they got wiped. That was incredible. Lemon and Weary Bunny, your coaches for Incendia T3. Uh, and so far, it looks like they've done an absolute spectacular job with this squad because, yeah, the reads have been spot on. What an adaptation. Ooh, Duratan in a lot of trouble. Oh, arrow Pulse falls! 3% coalescence. Great play to punish those supports. Wonderful target focus here from Lucky13. It's going to net them a fight win. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you pop window and just, I mean, just you have them in the corridor with the window up and there's nothing they could have done about it. They were trapped there. Just in this, this uh, team composition they're running is pretty fragile. Like Winston outside his bubble, you know, he doesn't have much to protect himself. So a window, you can destroy his bubble immediately and then just wipe Winston immediately. He does have the primal rage. Maybe he can get some environmental kills on this map. Uh, Coalescence coming out to engage with primal out. 
EMP at the ready as he tries to knock some numbers in. Ned's able to pick up both supports on the Reaper. Finds the soldier who has fallen to their doom. Ned just jumps into the pit after. Uh, and, uh, well, with the overtime work burden, it's Incendia coming back in using a lot of ults, but using them effectively. Yeah, I mean, it, it was final fight, so, you know, um, you know, all the ult Oh, they get the Winston with that. Oh, I, I mean, they I, get EMP I, out. That looked so good at the start for Incendia, and they just weren't quite oh. able to close out that fight. The self-destruct takes down that all-important Winston. Meta Lydia having to swap over to the hamster just to get back on here. Oh, that was a dangerous remech. Self-destruct now out. Buys enough space for Incendia to finally get this point under control. Yeah, and they were able to demech the D.Va with that, so that pretty much ended the fight there. It was looking really worrisome there for second but they were able to get their uh their respawns back in and win the fight and just reaper is just tearing people up net on the reaper is just going crazy right now he's got death blossom online they just got to make sure when he uses that death blossom that they either get the diva to use up all the defense matrix or they demech her before he uses it there's the demech right on cue now free to, to press that ultimate at their leisure. Manual hack on the site and site and goes bye-bye. Team fire, focus fire is there. There's the death blossom. That's got two in the corner. Wrecking ball uh -oh. not getting out of there. Two from Key. Uh, it's trying to keep Lucky 13 in this fight. And a valiant attempt, but no avail. Incendia closed wow. out with a 2-0. Take an early lead in series. Wow, the adjustments that Incendia is just making from map to uh, from sub map to sub map here on Nepal is just insane. I just shout out to the coaching staff and just just even if the team is just talking and they're just like, okay, what do we do here? They're running this. What's the best way to counter it? You know, whether it's the coaching staff or you know, you're just having a good team conversation as the fight goes on, it's just you can just see it on display how well they work together and how well their coaching staff is doing fantastic map very well done i couldn't agree more Get, gotta give love to the coaches i mean and that's you can, you can see it in action you can see the the results of their hard work the fruits of their labor if you would right there on display on nepal oh yeah for sure i mean we see on that map, you know, they're running the double shield. It's not working for them running the Arisa Diva back at it. They go, okay, we want to get in their face. Let's go Winston Diva. Let's go Reaper Sombra and just wipe them. And then on the first map on Shrine, their Ball Diva with the Fair Tracer wasn't working, you know, at first. They go, okay, let's get rid of the Fair. Let's go Sombra and let's go Zenyatta. Let's not run our Ana anymore. And just the hacks onto the ball and then the discord orbs and the harmony orbs that they get to give to their tracer. They're just making really smart swaps and composition changes. It's incredible. And uh, we'll head into map number two. They're going to try to keep that up as we're headed to Hollywood for our hybrid map for week number five. Oh, let me change that. Map number two. There we go. There we go. All right. Our graphics should be accurate now, right? Graphics should be accurate. Yes. <laughs> That's important. Um, yeah, gotta love Hollywood. It's a great hybrid map. Uh, you can see anything on defense. You know, double shield tends to be favored. We saw uh, Lucky 13 uh, do a pretty good job at first on double shield on Shrine until uh, Incendia made the swaps they needed to. So double shield could be their friend here on defense for Hollywood. And then on attack, you can see anything from rush to dive composition. So... Uh, I think the attack will be more where you see the variations in the compositions. All right. Let me just uh, communicate with our squads here. We are ready to go. We're just going to get right on into this thing. No subs on either side. So team's happy with their current lineups. So we're going to stick with that going going into map number two. We will yeah, get perfect. On the defense. What are you looking most forward to on this uh, Hollywood map coming up? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing this DPS shine. There's a lot of room for the DPS to make some, some really cool plays, some really pop-off plays in Hollywood, utilizing all the high ground available to them. Uh, and uh, you know, so far, we've seen DPS from both sides really put up some, some good stuff. So I'm looking for that to continue and see how this duel, you know, continues as this story progresses see if lucky 13 can strike back after that 02 loss there on nepal <clears throat> yeah for sure um 
yeah, like you said, the DPS have really been popping off. I mean, one that sticks out already was Ned on that Reaper was just going bonkers on uh yeah. on shrine there as we head into hollywood already and uh, no surprise here it looks like both teams you know assuming they stick with it are running farah this is a very good map for farah so no surprise there uh looks like incendia is gonna stick with their arisa diva comp that they started with on shrine uh and lucky 13 is gonna go with the ball diva uh the the chengdu hunter skin on justice i respect that Oh yeah, one hundred percent respect the the hunters' far skin. Well done, well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I realize from... the uh, confusing thing of the hunters' skin on Justice. I mean, that's a uh, you know not to be confused with Justice the team. But anyway, speaking of, <laughs> we've got a Shadow rolling out their own hunter scam. But this one on the Wrecking Ball, a prolific team that uh, made Wrecking Ball as popular as it is and really taught the world how to play it. And then right there, the boop off of the high ground of Cafe. Nice start here to dislodge the Orisa Diva defense. Try to open things up for these DPS to get work done. Uh, Justice is going to open things up. Flaming Ooh. answers right back. Taking Justice out of the sky, but Daryl Tame with the revenge. Back and forth, these teams go. Soma with the res gives the defense of Incendia the edge. Yeah, uh... That was a big res there by Soma. They're putting in work right now, uh, really keeping their Pharah alive because in this composition, sometimes it comes down to the Pharah duel. Who's going to win the Pharah duel? And uh, I mean, Justice got picked early, but Justice got two picks in that fight before he went down and then gets rezzed and, you know, you know, fight to live another day. And yeah, just winning the Pharah duel here. Oh, so important. And Flamin's going to be under a little bit more pressure with Ned on that soldier, able to just sit on some high ground in the back. Has the the option to not really go Ooh. anywhere. Oh, but I mean, it's, it's just a slide to a low to the side. Keen's going to take the down. Self-destruct out on the objective, trying to buy some space, trying to buy some time for Ned to get this attack visor up. Flamin's having none of it. Back to spawn you go. Duratan again with the revenge kill. Every time Flamin tries to kill somebody, Duratan is gonna, there to send them right back to spawn. But... No DPS left standing as Justice makes their return. It's Metal Liddy able to put the hurt down and keep Incendia in control. I feel like every time I feel like Lucky 13 is finally taking advantage, Soma comes in with the res or Metal Liddy comes in with a big play on Orisa. The, the, the Orisa Diva are just staying alive in the fight for so long and just keeping Incendia in, in just the fights to get their respawns back and they'll get one kill while they're also stalling so it just gives them so much of an advantage in these fights both barrages online are ready to go there oh comes one of course i switch off right after that happens it's gonna be the t-back <laughs> on the ink uh justice will fall we'll see if they can get that all point res off valk used to ensure the res comes through Key to throw the pulse down bomb down in the back, but Ned's able to find that kill. Turn around, putting their tension up front. No more DPS available for the attacking team. But Lucky 13 continue to press the issue. Uh, is Ink just kind of feeds their mech into the ult charge of the defense. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, you had to have seen that supercharger was laid down. I don't know why you would do that. Just get, get away, live to fight another day, and make them just use uh, supercharger as essentially a stalling ult at that point. But instead, you feed your mech, you give them more ult charge. You got a diva bomb online for them now. They had used a lot of ult, so you're just helping them more doing that. And as they switch to a Ryan Diva composition with a Symmetra McCree, so they want to get up in their face. Oh, yeah, just teleport right to the top cafe, drop a sound barrier, and try to focus down those tank lines. But oh yeah, it's Arrow was doing a great job, but once Arrow was off the battlefield, now finally this rush composition is able to start putting some more members of the defense back into the spawn. Uh, once again, a great res from Soma. I don't know if it's going to be enough this time. I mean, I'm just seeing a 2v2 here on point. Oh Durante is able to get one just as Tritons returns to the fight, but Key from the back is able to clear the skies. Ned from the side room returns with attack visor. Both teams continue to get reinforcements, continue to brawl it out to try to get this objective. Meta returning on the Reinhardt, takes Tritons down. And, and now Lucky 13 have to do this without their bat, but they've got the player advantage. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, incredible defense there from Sidier. I mean, I feel like, you know, they're probably disappointed for giving that one up. But, I mean, you got them to overtime. I think overall, very successful defensive hold there on first point. And you just, you know, just got to reset and, you know, just refocus. And you were doing a great job. You got this. Uh, I mean, if you can eat four minutes off the clock on point A, you have really set yourself up nicely. Uh, unlock, unlike a lot of hybrid maps, I feel like Hollywood is a little bit more defendable on point B. It doesn't feel like it as easily snowballs into mm -hmm. point C as some other maps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this Arissa Diva setup that they're going with, it, it helps them on second point because they have just all the high ground they can set their Arissa up on as Justice gets one with the barrage. That is quite literally Justice reigning from above. A little double entendre there, and I approve <laughs> as much as I approve of this high ground defense that has been very successful here thus far, under two minutes remaining. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Arissa, you just set her up on the high ground. She's able to just drop her shield down and just poke from up top. And they're running a Ryan composition. So this composition, I mean, only the D.Va, I mean, they do have the Symmetra teleporter, but it's still, it's an effort for them to get up to the high ground with this composition. And this teleporter is crucial. Pathing so important with this composition, especially against the Arissa. Uh, and so being able to circumvent that quickly engage uh, is imperative, and the teleport gets destroyed! Simbarer comes up to protect against the self-destruct, but now the Rush Cup has to just make the long walk across. But with the self-destruct from Shadow able to find value, Incendia have to get the heck out of dodge. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, they need to completely reset. They don't have the ultimates to even try and stay in this fight. Right. Uh, Lucky 13 did use a lot of ultimates there. They do only have three online, the shatter, the window, and the beat drop. But it, I mean, it's looking good for Lucky 13 to get this point here uh, because of the composition change and Cindy made the stall. They don't have the ults. Uh, and the, I mean, the Ant Matrix now out. Car wash set up on the closest exit point from the, uh, the film studio. Uh, means for an easy cap here. No contest coming through. Meta is going to fall early in this next fight. Some nice entry picks are keeping Insignia off balance. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Uh, they do have Justice coming in with the uh, Barrage to lay down as well as the the Amplification Matrix. And Lucky 13 doesn't really have many ultimates coming up online. Any, uh, they do have the High Noon coming up and the, the, uh, the Symmetra Wall coming up. But... I'd wait. Uh, the the window and the barrage should be enough to win them team fights here. We'll see how many ults Insidia has to invest. I think that's going to be. They can definitely win it with these four. It's do they have to use all four? Supercharger Bob out, an underutilized combo in my opinion. You get that seventh man, that extra fifty percent damage, and look at that. Two kills on the board already for the defense of Incendia. As the rest of Lucky Thirteen are just going to retreat out of there, reset a little bit. I mean, yeah, I mean, nice. Uh, that's exactly what I would have done if you're Lucky 13. You don't want to hard engage to that fight, especially when they've dropped Bongos uh, and Bob at the same time. Just like you said, like you've been saying, you want to get out of dodge, and the window comes out for Lucky 13. self destructing the high ground for the defense. Going to try to push it down. Oh, it doesn't quite fall. Still, you get immortality filled out, which means Justice can now throw down the barrage. Picks up two, including Tritons in the back. Primary source of healing gone. Ned finds the other support. And that just means there's not enough sustain for Ink to stick around. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there was, I mean, that was nicely done. The Diva, like you said, the Diva Bomb got rid of that uh, Immortality field. So then the, the Barrage comes out, gets two, and the D-Mech. And, but Lucky 13 does have the High Noon online and the wall. So they can they could use the wall to protect themselves here. Or the Reinhardt shield is the High Noon's coming out right now. Yep, looking for some skulls. Deadeye just kind of zoning out the back of that point. Photon Barrier invested as well to dissect it. And City are going to sit on the right-hand side of it from their point of view. But Meta moves in, can't quite get the healing through the barrier. Falls to the Hammer of Ink with the overtime. Rick Burden, Lucky 13, seem to have indeed found their luck. Pushed this all the way home. That's three points on the board. See what you did there. Lucky 13 found their luck. I like that. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, very impressive just to come back from just being pushed to overtime on point A to just pretty much, I mean, snowballing point B and C pretty much. I mean, they got stopped a little bit, but I mean, if any consolation, if you're in Cindy, uh, uh, Incidia, um, you, uh, you got them to overtime. So you can give yourself a win condition if you finish with over a minute on the clock. 
So, so I guess true. if it's any consolation, you feel good about that. Especially oh, definitely, the, definitely. Yeah. And, and that, I think that all goes back to point A. They held point A for yeah. four minutes. Uh, and it's really just kind of set themselves up for success. Now, if Incendia can take point A with some time, I would say, I mean, I'm looking at the two-minute mark. You can, if you can yeah. take point A with, you know, two minutes left, you're really in a good position. For sure, and uh, teams are playing the opposite game here. Lucky 13 is running the same comp that uh, that in uh, Insidia run uh, on the defense, and Insidia is running the Lucky 13 attack. So uh, they both realize that these are the best compositions for attack and defense on this map. Uh, no surprise. I mean, Bald Diva is a very popular comp, and Arissa Diva is the counter to that, so it's, it's not a big surprise. Uh, Ball Diva is also a fun comp to play, I will say. Mm -hmm. Oh, for it's sure. Very active. Uh, you know, you can have a lot of impact with really each of the heroes feel like you have great impact on the on the team fights. Oh, what a great comp to play. Uh, Meta's going to go around back, try to dislodge while Justice is putting rockets in, open up space for Duratan to grab the high ground. As this attacking team looks to surround Cafe, put some shots in. Both teams are going to lose a support early, but... Rez available for the attack Looking. team. Not so much here for Lucky. As Justice going in close for the kill. Trying to take Keed out of this fight. Keed's one. Tritons is one. Ned there to finish off the former. Somehow Tritons able to get topped off. But reinforcements dwindling for the defense of Lucky 13. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're trying to do a good job of holding. They use the immortality field, I think. With that being gone, you're pretty much uh, out just going down with the ship at this point. Yes, um, Shadow trying to push out there, but here comes the barrage over the top. Ink's going to go down. Not enough defense matrix to keep Shadow alive through that, or at least in mech. Yeah, I, I have no problem with that barrage either. Like like you said, if they could capture that point very quickly, they're putting themselves in a great position. So I have no problem with you committing barrage to that just to ensure that you get it and have all this time to push. And lots of time indeed. I mean, over five minutes in the bank. You know, I was saying point B isn't as snowball-y, but I still say it's a little attacker favored. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially if you have a composition that can take the high ground, which Ball Diva can take the high ground. You know, Ball can easily grapple up there. Diva can fly up there. They have a Farah. I mean, Tracer could just take the, um, the elevator and then just use her blinks after that. So this composition can easily take the high ground away from them. I mean, yeah, no, only two of the six have to even Ooh. touch the elevator. Self-destruct from Duratan finds a great opening pick. Uh, the nano boost is actually thrown onto the Mercy. Uh, I think Soma <laughs> might have gotten in the way in between Justice and Arrow Pulse. Uh, and unfortunately for them, that nano kind of falls on deaf ears. Now the fight kind of falls down to the low ground position. Meta's going to throw some mines down to await the defense of Lucky 13. Broken up. Shadow's going to try to buy some space, buy some time. Throws the self-destruct into the mix. Soma gets caught out on the other side. Flamin' able to buy wow. two kills in those close quarters. Nice job with nice job, uh, Flamin' there with, on, the, on the cowboy there. Just massive value. Got two picks there. Really, uh, when things could have been looking bad there with the mines, the ball was kind of whacking people around into the mines and getting some kills. Uh, came through for his team there. It was looking real dicey there for a moment, wasn't it? Yeah. But they do have this um, both hit scan ultimates online right now. They got the tactical visor and the high noon available. So, ooh, justice goes down. Yeah, it's not what you want if you're Incendia in this fight. Uh, someone will find that res. Fortunately, justice fell in a safe spot. But now attack visor out. Could be the bane of this pharmacy's existence. Yep, there it is. The yep. second kill in this fight for Keen. Uh, against Justice specifically, and primary source of damage now absent. And it's going to be up to Meta and Ned to try to make something happen if they even want to stick around in this. Let's take a look. Where are they at? Meta's going to circle around. Ned's waiting at the bottom of the elevator. And it looks like they're just kind of buying some time here, Ray. Yeah, I mean, you got to get your Farah back, essentially, in this fight. You have Barrage online. The only problem is you got to be careful. Ooh. Yeah, because Slayman has there. been... Well, red hot on the Cowboy here on this point B defense. Holy cow. Yeah, like I was going to say, you got to be careful uh, using Barrage here because they have... And they have two hit scans who can focus you down once you are stationary using Barrage. So Justice has to be very careful about how he wants to use Barrage here. I mean, essentially, I'd probably use it to go after and kill it, one of those hit scans. 
Get up close. Did I oh, interrupted! Ooh. Right before the barrage comes out, the nano direct hits Flamin right in the cowboy hat. And sends the Southern Shooter right back to spawn, opening things up. That was split second timing on that one. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was actually huge because that window was popped. Oh, if yes. He, if he would have waited a second longer, he would have gotten wiped by that window. I mean, maybe even a half second. Like that was that yeah. was such a crucial timing on that direct rocket right before throwing the barrage down. Now able to move in, kind of pounce onto Keed like a bird of prey. Keed's got to head for the hills. Ink holding down the objective. And the defense have done a decent job of buying some time. I mean, that was a five-minute time bank that they whittled down to about a minute before yeah. Insidia is finally able to get their way into point C. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there was a very... Like you said, uh, it, it is attack favored, but, I mean, it's not as snowball-y as you stated, and, you, you know, Lucky 13 really showed that to be true there. Look at how aggressive Vincent here getting here. Med is pushing all the way into the back. Ned there with them. Oh, they've swapped to the Sombra here for the third point. I like this. No more just, just controlling that mega pack alone is so important for Meta. Oh, and yeah. Ned. Oh, and they've swapped to a Ryan composition for Lucky 13 here. I mean, uh, even it kind of even plays into the favor that the comp they're running with the Sombra, you can hack the Reinhardt. Or, as we see there, the Brig as well. And they get the Soldier. That's a good pick. We still have the Anti-Die Flamen moving over to the Torbjorn. Could give some problems here. Uh, and you can see Torb getting aggressive, and it's forcing Cindy to kind of scatter about. Yeah, they, they popped Rally there, so I, I think they're just going to hold back and wait a minute. Uh... They, they don't have uh, they don't have you know a whole lot of damage to uh, I mean they have the Discord Orb now I just saw they they swapped to the Zenyatta, uh, but it's hard for this composition to kill the with Rally armor up. Oh no kidding! I mean in Meta Ned Justice all just get severely nerfed with all that Rally armor up. What great value from Sight's ultimate? <clears throat> for sure, and we're looking at Pulse Bomb Diva Bomb on the side. And for Lucky, out comes the Diva Bomb. Not oh, going to get anyone. Unfortunate move from my camera. I got stuck in that room. I was trying to get outside. But fortunately, it wasn't huge or anything. Uh, just find a D-Mech. We are going to get that attack visor up from the top level. Drop it down. Keen's able to find Ned. Soma's taken out in the back line. Keen with eight health scrambling. Looking for somewhere to go. But oh. cannot find any reprieve. Eventually falls with the defense of Lucky 13. Edge out the fight just ever so narrowly. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think this swap to the Torborn was a very good idea here for Lucky 13 because it really bothers like a Tracer and a Sombra uh, when they're trying to flank around and uh, be sneaky and trying to get behind you. The, t the turret can just be so bothersome to characters like that because yeah. they swapped off the Tracer to a Cowboy. Indeed, exactly. I was just thinking the same thing. Ned had to. You can't stick on the Tracer and the Sombra, especially with the Brig like we were talking about. But speaking of Sombras, EMP at the ready. One good fight one could do this, and it's a five-man EMP. Ned's able to push in. Meta picks up their counterpart. And you can feel this Reinhardt composition just plow it through into the back. But now they've got lava under their feet. A lot of damage coming through. Ned goes down. The floor is lava. Indeed. It, it is Incendia who are feeling the burn right now, Ray. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I thought that was looking really bad there. And then out comes the lava and just really just completely turn that fight around. What a perfectly timed ultimate. I mean, you can just feel the tide turn and Incendia were all rushing forward. Uh, I mean, it felt like Lucky 13 were just tripping over their own feet, trying to back out as quickly as they could. But then there comes the Molten Core. Uh, that was a map winning ultimate coming out perfectly played. And it's going to tie up our series. Yeah, Lucky 13 coaching stuff showing, hey, we can make adjustments too. Uh, whenever things were getting a little shaky, they made the right changes. You know, they went to the Torbjorn there. Very good swap. Uh, some of the times when they went to the Reinhardt comps, it was the right thing to do. So, you know, like like we said, uh, last map it was Insidia making the composition changes with the coaching staff. This time, Lucky 13 just looking great with those changes. Whew. Well, this has been exactly what I would expect from our two undefeated teams coming out of T3 Division 1. Neck and neck, so far, just absolutely going blow for blow, pound for pound. We'll see who can take the edge. We're going to take a short break when we return. Map 3.
It is time for map number three here in our tier three week five matchup. Lucky 13 and Cindy have tied one to one. Hollywood was an absolute back and forth pick, counter pick. We saw the Faras. We saw the double hits can come out to counter that after the Faras duel went in Incendia's favor. Then we see the double flankers come out from Incendia to try to get around them. Then we get the counter dive at the end prevails for Lucky 13. They're able to tie up the series. Yeah, for sure. Um, both teams have shown an ability to see what the other team is running and make crucial counter swaps to really affect the compositions that the teams have, that the other team has been running with great success. Like they took, uh, for example, Insidia took that first point so quickly on point uh, on point A for Hollywood, and then they swapped to the Cree, they swapped to the Bray again. Yep. They just stopped them in their tracks, and they had to try and swap and change things up, and they held point B for such a long time. It was a huge hold. And looking to do that again as we head to map number three. It's going to be Hanamura. We're headed to beautiful Japan. Ray, I love this map. Uh, well, at least aesthetically, it's pretty enough that, you know, I don't mind some struggles taking point B from time to time. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Uh, it's definitely um, the best looking 2CP map, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, on this, on this, uh, on this map, on the attack, you're either going to see probably ball diva, like we've been seeing from both teams so far, or you're going to see probably a Rhine style rush with Symmetra to, cause with ball diva, they can just clear the space, you know, with their, um, with their abilities, you know, boosters grapple through. Um, but if you're going to run the Rhine rush style, you need like a Symmetra teleporter to clear the distance for you. And I mean, the, the teleporter is, I mean, that is the tried and true. I think it was kind of started on this map. Like we're, we've started to see Sim throughout this past year. Sim has crept more and more into the brawl meta, but it has always been a staple here on Hanamura. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For sure. So, I mean, that's probably the map. Uh, so I can't wait to get into this map and see what the teams are going to pick. I, I'm expecting, I mean, considering what we've seen, that I mean, both teams are pretty apt at this brawl. Uh, I'm guessing, and it's just speculation here, it's just a guess here, right? But I'm, I'm guessing we're going to get some more of the uh, the Arisa Diva on defense versus that Reinhardt Symmetra brawl on offense, for, at least on point A. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if one of them wants to run a Farah. Uh, I mean, true, you, you see true. it in Owl a lot where you run it on, it's on point A on defense or attack. There's just a lot of skies and a lot of area for uh, fair to work with. Um, not sure if they actually commit to that. It's a lot tougher on this map to run it than say their last map, Hollywood. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, with I'm with you. I think the Rhine Rush with Symmetra is probably gonna be favored here. It's just a really good composition on this map and hard to pass up playing. Well, heading in. We are going to get a little side swap, so it's going to be Lucky 13 starting us off on the defense. Uh, and uh, just to put out there a little correction, so I, I have been mispronouncing the main tank on the other side. I misread the way they put their pronunciation down, but it is Metality. Uh, so that was Ooh. just... It, I misinterpreted how they put the pronunciation down. Uh, I think there's a little... That, yeah, on me, on me. So sorry about that. It is Metality who's been leading the charge and doing such a great job here for, for Incendia. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> I actually prefer that pronunciation, Metality. I think that's yeah, a... Yeah, that's, that's a much cooler name. <laughs> yeah, much cooler name. <laughs> much cooler name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting that both teams are going to play Symmetra attack and defense. I've, I don't see Symmetra played a lot on this map on defense. You can make it work. I just don't see it very often. And let's see how the defense are going to set up their teleporter. I see this one here. I'm guessing the other one is over by Mini. I'm not quite sure. Oh, they moved it. Uh, also, another interesting thing to note is we're looking at a uh, Orisa Rhine double shield composition. Double main mm -hmm. tank for the defense of Lucky 13. Uh, and so far, it's served them well. They found a VMEC. They found a pick on Justice. And the rest are just going to snowball into a fight win. Yeah, I mean, that... Uh, I mean, honestly, a little insane there. Uh, you would think... Um, with the extra shield that Lucky 13 has, it would be easier for Justice on the Symmetra to, you know, farm up and charge up her beam. But that wasn't the case in that fight. The uh, the Symmetra on the side of Lucky 13 got much more value there, as we're already swapping to an Echo here for Justice. Yeah, no more no more silly Sim strats coming out of Insidia on the attack. <laughs> and the uh, window comes out already. Yeah, I think it's a hair early. Uh, as you can see, easily just kited away from now. You're buying some time, sure. 
Uh, but I think Tritons was hoping that they were about to hard engage. But here it comes out. Amp speed. Brawlcom rushing in. Photon Barrier blocks Ooh. the Shatter from Vitaly. The Counter Shatter finds two. That is Arrow Post and Ned back in spawn already. The defense a lucky 13 looking indomitable in the opening half of this attack. Wow, that Photon Barrier was so amazingly timed. I don't know if they knew Shatter was coming there and they used the that or... Um, my guess is they were just, you know, walling it off because they were hard rushing him and they're trying to get back and put a wall up. But still, in incredible photon barrier there. Blocks the shatter, then they're able to come back with their shatter and win the fight. Big plays from Flamin. Uh, another outstanding performance from them so far on the day. These DPS have all both been fantastic. There's a double damage fire strike. And Flamin, I cursed you. I'm so sorry, my friend. Back in spawn you go. But Vitality falls. Uh, Justice. Oh, <laughs> double damage, Sticky Fobs. Oh, that's just nightmare fuel, Ray. That's nightmare fuel. <laughs> yeah. What, what's the old adage? The caster curse. You, you curse flame in there. <laughs> I did. I did. My fault. Uh, my fault. It's, it's a plus one <laughs> to the attackers right now. Flame's going to drop a teleporter, get back in this fight. Look at his split. And uh, it looks like the, the offense of Incendia kind of slowed ever so slightly. Now they're going to go ahead and engage. They're going to drop the Deadeye from the high ground. They're waiting for Ned to circle around, get in perfect position. But it bought time for reinforcements to show up for the defense. Ooh. Another big shatter from Ink. Got oh. two. Another fight winner. That was a ooh, shatter Ant Matrix combo. I, I think that was a big mistake there by Insidia. I really felt like they should have hard committed to that fight. They're playing so passive. And they, like Lucky 13 was down in that fight. You sh they should have really hard committed there. and Because these two CP maps, you can't just let people linger. You got to wipe them as a team or you're never going to get the point. Especially with the teleporter. I think they may have underestimated how quickly Flaming was going to get back. Um, I mean, it, it, it perhaps just overthought it a little bit. You know, tried to get Ned on the high ground, tried to get just perfectly positioned before they made that second phase of the push. Uh, and I agree with you 100%. Maybe a little too patient. You gotta, you gotta take advantage. You gotta take the bull by the horns. Otherwise, that's what's gonna happen. Defense aside, we'll take it. You don't want to get aggressive? Well, Lucky 13, decide they'll get aggressive for you. They're gonna decide your fate. Send you back to spawn. Yeah, they do. Uh, they were able to get the Lucio and the Symmetra there, but I mean, teleporter speed boost, it's not really gonna matter. They're gonna get back very quickly in the fight. Couple of tools are ready to go. Keen, looking to shut this thing down before it even begins. That's a lot of skulls, but the immortality field is there. Self destruct in from Duratan, but both tanks already done. Oh, Just is oh, gonna try to supplement with the duplicate. Go in, swinging. That's a hammer down, but the supercharger quickly takes Justice out of that doppelganger form. And that's a lot of damage on the battlefield. And no that, red jersey. That is one of my favorite. That is one of my favorite ultimate combinations. Supercharger amplification matrix. Oh, that's a fun one to use. That's that's 150% Just... extra damage. Like uh... Yeah, it's like, let me wipe your team real quick. Let me sneeze on you and a Reinhardt just falls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, that's, it's, I mean, you know, obviously you, you generally, you want to use those separately, but just the rare occasions where you use them. So cool to see. That was the perfect time. I mean, you're in final fight, yeah. overtime wicks burden. You've got all that extra damage. I mean, that was the perfect time to, to drop the, to stack those damage ultimates. Uh, it's definitely a joy to watch. No doubt. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, very impressive defense there for Lucky 13. Now, all they need is a single tick on uh, on the attack here, and they have their win condition here on uh, Hanamura. Looks like, uh, looks like both teams are going to stick to the Symmetra compositions. Um, it just surprises me that, I mean, it, it works so well on defense. I just, like I said, I don't see the Symmetra defense a lot here on this map. But it's working incredibly for Lucky 13. So when City said, let me take a page out of your guys' book. And equally surprising to me, by the way, is this double main tank defense. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you forego a lot of utility just for raw sustain. We're going to get Flamin' Hard. I'm sure they're electing to play on the... Interesting yeah. enough, they're looking to... Oh, I don't know why they were playing up on the rock there. It just gave them free teleport well, to the point. They had the defense had the teleporter available to to come back here and meet them, uh, which was the plan. And so far, it's working out. You can 
both of these Symmetra Beams are just at full bore right now. Uh, it's everybody getting microwaved on this point. Both Reinhardt's off the battlefield. As it's a very equal match going on around this big old Dragon Bell. This Triton's going down. King goes down. And that's the edge over to Incendia. Yeah, you know, my mistake, you know, they really made that work. They took advantage of the teleporter they had up. I thought, you know, they shouldn't be playing on the rock there. They just gave them free access to the point, but they, they did. They rotated very well there. Well, you weren't Props the only one baited by that. Uh, Lucky 13, I don't think we're expecting that either. At least not to that degree. <clears throat> they only thought it was uh, free, right? You know, they only thought it was free. Yeah. Uh, I mean... You got to be creative here, especially when the team only needs a tick. I mean, just get your ultimates up. Like they have Shatter Window up already. That there goes the photon barrier. Woo! Two man Ooh. dead eye out of the back. Ned shutting this one down. Ooh. Beautiful headshot onto Key to boot. Ned said, "Not today." Good start for the defense. I mean, they've already whittled off some time, uh, and. They're, they're not letting the attackers get ahead in the ult economy either. They're doing a good job with their rotations. Yeah, I mean, you're already seeing just how frustrating TCP can be. <laughs> Both defenses are just doing an incredible job and just show how frustrating it can be attacking on TCP. I, it's, I mean, it's, it, it varies so much by the meta. Uh, you know, whether you get the, the nine CP or whether it's yeah. a super defensive assault. But Flaming coming in with this Photon Bear is going to be able to create a lot of room. Key trying to open things up, but the entirety of Incendia just taking cover behind the bell. And Mortality Field up. Soma was the only one who actually even took damage from that. Soma stayed alive. Importantly enough, is able to get the Sound Barrier out. Self-Destruct into the back. Endurance Ooh. Head goes down. No, it's a free shatter for Ink. And that's Curtains for Incendia. Lucky 13 will take a 2-1 lead in the series. Ah, you had the opportunity there. That was curtain. Take a bow, Lucky 13. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> See, I'll just let it open for you. I teed it up. You knocked it out. That's 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 a story. I'm sticking to it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, impressive there from Lucky 13. I mean, like I said, you only needed a tick. So you just needed to make sure you build up your ultimates. They get the Diva Bomb in there. Take down the Reinhardt. And once the Reinhardt's down, your Symmetra just has free reign to just microwave everyone to death. Yeah, that's uh, well done. Well, that was a fun match. That was, that was a fun map. It was unexpected. You know, I, I love it when I get things that completely uh, defy my expectations, uh, like like watching some double main tanks go at it, watching these clever defensive teleport strats. I was expecting the offensive teleport strats, but the defense yeah. one, that, that was awesome. What a great hold from, from Lucky 13. Oh yeah, it was an incredible hint. Just, just shows you the power of Symmetra. Like, you don't need, like, even defensively, where she's, you know, not getting, you know, teleporting her team straight into the, into them and, you know, just farming beam off Reinhardt. She's playing defensive, staying back, waiting for them to come to you and then farming her beam off that. And it, it was just incredible. Just the turret placement she had all over the, the point with just very good Symmetra play there from Lucky 13. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. And that that beam, that level three beam is just so yeah. darn scary. Oh, my goodness. It, 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 ugh. It's one of the reasons I hate Symmetra. Symmetra's one of the reasons it's fun to play, but can be so frustrating to play again. It's like, zoop, dead, <laughs> dead, zoop, dead, zoop, dead. <laughs> oh, man. That's, oh. The caliber of those two Sims, that, that, that was that was awesome. I mean, Justice and Flamin were both doing a fantastic job, but obviously uh, Flamin coming out on top, you know, when the rest of the team all looks good, you know, kind of, it all, it, it's, it's a high tide, you know, raises all ships kind of thing, so... Yeah, as we say that, uh, on the front line too. oh yeah, I mean, the, sh the shatter play between both teams was incredible. It, I think that really came down to who was getting more value out of their shatters. Every time I felt like Insidia had a, a chance to take the first point, out came a big shatter on the side of Lucky 13 and just, just shut down any chance they had at getting the point. And then we saw the shatter that got blocked by the photon barrier, so it was just really good counterplay on both sides and... You know, this is great Overwatch, you know, very just back and forth gameplay here. Well, now Lucky 13 on match point. I'm very excited four. for yes. this next map. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. Love me some watch point Gibraltar. It is one of my favorite escort maps in this game. Just 
it's just so unique compared to some of the escort maps that exist in this game. Just the, the, the importance of high ground and just like it's not a map that you can just easily run Reinhardt on. It really lends itself more to Winston or Ball. It's I just love this map. Me too. It's one of my favorite maps to cast. It's one of my favorite maps to play all around. Uh, I think just a, a wonderfully designed map. Uh, and one where the the defense is always going to have at some point have a good opportunity to make a hold. This mm -hmm. is, uh, I was having this discussion today with, uh, with uh, Theomatic, who is a T2, T3 player. I love watching his streams. He's a main tank player. He's got a great brain for the game, great attitude. And we were discussing the macro of Escort and how that's, the points are always so different that you don't really get these big snowballs at, on, mm -hmm. on hardly any Escort map. And Watchpoint Gibraltar is a great example of that, where the geometry of each objective is so different that your, your defense is going to have an opportunity to put up a good hold somewhere along the line. Yeah, it's like really weird. It's like first point is like at some points it's really con congested and then other points it's super open. And then like second point, it tends to be a lot more congested and brawly. And then third point, it's like completely open. So it, it's just yeah. lots of variety. And, uh, you know, traditionally a wonderful Winston map. You can run uh, double bubble here. It's mm -hmm. a personal favorite of mine. We could see more of the ball composition for sure. Anything that'll take good advantage of that high ground. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, uh, the skies are open for Farah on this map. Uh, you know, Echoes, even Sombra is a good hero to run on this map. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the we saw uh, uh, Insidia love to play the Sombra, especially to counter Ball from Lucky 13. So maybe we see some Sombra here. Just having control of the health packs on this map can actually be really big. Yeah, it you can't, especially with the ball cops, that cannot be understated about having mega mega pack control. Cannot be understated, especially in that server room. Ooh, this is interesting. Looks like, okay, it looks like both teams, uh, let's see, defensively, they're going with a ball diva. I mean, we still have time before the round starts, but hog diva for lucky 13? I'm all for it if, you know, they want to run the hog. I love playing hog. My team, uh, if you get your hooks off, Hog can be dangerous. Well, I'll be taking a look at the defense. We know we know what they're running out with. And, uh, it's the Sombra Soldier 76. So they are yeah. going to try to get that health pack control. They've got that Zen there for that extra damage as well. Oh, and there's the Discord Org already Ooh. on display. Looks like they are sticking the Hog. So it's really just going to come down to uh, can, can uh, Ink hit his... Uh, Hit his uh his hooks here. If he get if he can hit him, he just he can one shot a good amount of those characters on the what? side of Insidia. It also requires Ink to stay out of the way of that summer hack flaming with some beautiful directs. What a way for Lucky Thirteen to open up this fight. Oh yeah, I mean the Thera, the one thing you want to get rid of if Thera is the soldier to get him immediately. Huge. Huge. And there it is. Ink land in the hooks, land of the shot. Soma goes down. Now has a Zin in their side. Zin landing a lot of shots, arrow pulls. Ooh. Able to put down our hurt and mentality comes in with the backup. Uh, look at this focus fire. Sightens doesn't stand a chance. The defensive incendiary are gonna hold, but Ned continues to, to struggle to find value against Flame and Farah. Yeah, I mean, that was really good communication on the side of Insidia. You, I mean, I can imagine in the part Zen, like, you gotta. Here comes the backup. Takes out the hog. And that oh. manual hack on the hog is, is a death sentence. I mean, you are 600 health of ult battery, of ult charge for the opposition. Mm -hmm. Res comes through on a shadow. I've been taken, taken out initially. Ink trying to escort this through low ground, but Insignia have put server room on lockdown. Now they explode forward out. They'd start chasing their individual targets. Ned in the back. Flame, it drops the barrage. Someone goes down. Transcendence out. It was enough to save uh, Metality. I believe he was in there with them. Oh. But not enough to save everybody. Nice shot. Aeropulse really putting on a show for us here on point A. Oh, yeah. Aeropulse is killing it here on the Zenyatta. Had a really good Transcendence. And the Diva Punk gets the Sombra. And he gets the Zenyatta looking good here for Lucky 13. Uh, not before Justice was able to get the manual down on a Triton, so the uh, res did not come through. 
So there was an interesting little interaction that all just happened. Now we've got mines on the point, courtesy of Metality. Oh, beautiful hook. Soma just keeps getting hooked. Ake has their number right now. Uh, he does. I mean, uh, just getting... But as we say that, the Tracer is taking on so many as the EMP comes out, gets three... I wasn't sure that Insidia had the reinforcements to take advantage, but two kills right on the back of that huge EMP. And it's a lot of the stabilize, big play, uh, bold play from Justice, and it pays dividends. Yeah, every time, you know, it's looking, you know, dicey there for Insidia. Someone comes in, whether it be the ball, whether it be the tracer, whether it be the Sombra, and gets a couple crucial picks and just allows the reinforcements to get back in they're able to stabilize and they have a rally in this fight and unless the hogs you know hitting some people with his hooks combo it's going to be tough to take down with the rally armor up so much just holding on to it right now there they go they finally go ahead and drop down that rally as arrow pulse hits the dirt player advantage immediately brought back tritons and shadow sent back to spawn plus one to the defense we go to Pa. I fly after swapping over to the Genji. Immediately gets taken down. Manual hack onto eight. Who whiffed on the hook onto Metality. Now there's just 30 seconds left on this clock. And Sinia really stepping up their game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they're doing a great job. And they're coming up on Transcendence and EMP. I mean, they have the ingredients they need to take control. And really force a first point hold here. It would be really good to get some momentum going their way after dropping the last two maps. Manual hack, not successful. Key going up the top with the pole spot, throws it into the corner, finds Toma with that pick. Justice taken out in the interim as well. Plus two as Flamin pulls out the katana, runs it into the back. Arrow Post is gonna pull the trigger on that transcendence as Dirtan finds that kill on a Flamin. But Metality is down and it's still a two player advantage for Lucky 13's on this attack. Uh, they should be able to ride that advantage. And but here comes Justice once again. Could it be another big EMP? Will this save the fight? Duratan takes Sightens down. You've got to be kidding me, no Ray. Way. I don't believe it. The defense will hold on. Justice with their second massive comeback EMP of the map. And they have managed to stabilize on the back of that play. See, I was thinking, you know, you have EMP here, but they didn't have the numbers. And then they just get, they just got the pick so fast off the EMP that, the, and then the bomb, the bomb with that EMP was just so big. I didn't realize when they had EMP, they had bomb with that. Oh my goodness. Two times in a row, they brought it back with that EMP. Mm-hmm. Well, we're I'm sitting here thinking, do they have the reinforcements to make it happen? I'm not sure. Two times they proved me wrong. Yeah, an incredible job there from Insidia. They really fought themselves back into this, and they gave them a win condition to 45 here. All they have to do is essentially cap off first point. Just got to make it around this corner. You can see how far the shuttle progressed. But I, I got to say, I've seen more full holds turn into fuller holds. I'll watch yeah. one Gibraltar, and I think any other map race. <laughs> so it's, they yeah. can't rest on their laurels just yet. Oh, for sure. There have been plenty of times where you, my team in tier two, we get full hold and then it's like, oh, well, here we go. And then we fuller hold. It's crazy. Like, it, it, I don't know if teams just get inspired and they go this, you know, it, first point is a hard one to break through. That's the once you tend to break through first point, it tends to snowball a little bit. But first point's not an easy one to take, especially once you start edging the corner because the spawn advantage for the defense is just so big. Well, it's going to be the anti-dive comp coming through with the McCree and the Torbjorn holding that center box or plat box. Yeah, McCree, Torb, Brig, you know, no surprise. They're expecting the Ball Diva. It's going to come at them, and they're going Sombra Soldier um, for the attack here. You know, surprise, uh, Sombra got huge value on the defense. Can get just as much value on the attack. And that Ned kind of losing a duel to a turret there. Stops the back out <laughs> and heal up. Justice look for an opening here, finds a manual hack, but Metality's already taking a lot of damage and that attack a little bit out of sync. Ned does manage to take care of that pesky turret, try to open things up for a second try. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I mean, the key here is going to be, can they properly coordinate their dives and attacks here uh, for city I mean, all, like we said, all they need to do is essentially get the point. But like you said, that's not such an easy task. 
But if they do it properly, especially with the Zenyatta, with the Discord Orb, I, I think it can be very successful if they do it right. Whoop! Metality kind of ran out of momentum there. It wasn't quite the rollout they were looking for. I have to back out and find some heals. Uh, but they have some wonderful positioning. Uh, grabbing blue box. And initially, I'd taken a little bit more control of server, but now Lucky 13 have been able to fall back into server. Metality gets just absolutely evaporated trying to roll in there. But with uh, Insidia escorting this cart slowly but surely, they just need one fight win here. Yeah, considering where the cart is right now, you get EMP bomb going. They have Transcendence already. Looking good here for Insidia. And they have the tactical visor too. Yeah, EMP tactical visor can be mean for sure. Ooh, nice discord. Oh, Inks in a lot of trouble. Got to get out of there. That was a bold defensive move. Trying to get up there and dislodge the high ground. I think Lucky 13 might have just sealed their fate as they've given up that server room. Ant Matrix dead eye. Oh, Keeping them in the fight with the two man dead eye. Follows it up with some beautiful shots on Soma as well. Nicely done there by the cowboy. High noon, just when things were looking bad, you gave up the server room, and high noon comes out and just, just crazy. I mean, the bad part is they did have to use three, almost four ultimates there, so they got they, their ult economy is not looking great, especially when you're considering Insidia is coming up on five ultimates. Yeah, they've been hoarding these things like a squirrel. They are stocked up and ready for winter. EMP out, mines over yeah, the back cool. of them. Oh, beautiful combo. And that's half of the defense already. Watching the respawn timer. Titans is going to fall. That is going to do it for Watchpoint Gibraltar. We're headed to map five, Ray. We are. This is exactly what I wanted from the get-go. I said it. I said I'm hoping for a map five. I think we should get a map five. Both teams undefeated. And we have a map five. Oh my goodness, what a map. What a series. What yeah. a series. It's all, Of course it's going to come down map 5. I would expect no less from these two squads. Both 4 and 0 oh, have dropped only 4 maps total between the two of them. None of them, neither have dropped a series. But after our next map, one of them will have at least a 1 in the loss column. I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to sip of my tea a little bit. Recenter myself, y'all hydrate. We'll see you back here. It's going to be Oasis to be the deciding map. We're headed to map five. I cannot believe it. I would expect no less from these teams, Ray. Is uh, Insignia able to come back on yeah. Gibraltar? Hand them their second loss of this map. It's only the third map loss for Lucky 13 all season. Yeah, incredible. I mean, both these teams have just been back and forth all night. Just the adjustments made on both sides. The coaching staffs have been incredible for both teams. It's all going to come down to Oasis. Yep, yeah. Oh, hey, that's that's a good opportunity for me to pull up. Oh, oh, oh I clicked the wrong button. There we go. I was I was talking to our team. Sorry, I'm, I'm in contact <laughs> with our our lobby hosts and our teams. Try to, to get going on. There we go. That's a good opportunity to bring up our map pool screen. Also allows us to get a look at how we got here. I mean, Incendio came out and stomped on Nepal, and then lost two in a row. I mean, what a bounce back from Watchpoint Gibraltar to send us to this map five. Yeah, for sure. I mean, both the last two maps on uh, Hanamura and and Gibraltar, it came down to who could full or hold, and the Lucky 13 came out on top on Hanamura, but Insidia come back, came back and did a great job there on Watchpoint. Their EMP lines, bomb combos were just insane. There were so many fights that looked like it wasn't going so well, and then you see an EMP come out and they just turn it around. It was incredible. That was nuts twice! Twice they were down big, and it looked like Lucky 13 for sure were able to get make their way inside the hangar. Nope, EMP comes through with some clutch kills, some wonderful focus fire. That that was nuts. That was that was my favorite part. Although the, the EMP mines that you were talking about, that that came through on the attack of Incendia. Oh, that's uh, two try hard just got EMP'd into the void here. Are you still on, Mike? Up, oh, I might have just lost try hard altogether.
Yeah, it looks like I did. Well, that's all right. Well, we're just gonna fly solo here for a moment until we get Ray back in here. Um, but that's how that's how good the EMPs were. Is it knocked my co-caster right out? Dude, let's see. You there? You there, Ray? We got you back in here yet? Well, let's see. Let's uh, give you a moment, friends. We're going to get this set up. What's going on here? We're, we're just going to troubleshoot on the fly. That's that's uh, that's just how it's going right now. I'm back. Nice. There we are. Welcome back. Perfect <laughs> timing, my friend. Perfect timing. We're, we're just about to, to head into map five. Yeah, sorry about those guys. My internet kind of crapped out on me there for a second, but it we happens. are back. We are ready to go into map five and just close off this incredible series we've seen between these two teams. I mean, just based on control and City, I kind of dominate on control, so maybe you want to favor them coming into this final map, but Lucky 13 has shown an incredible just good team fights, good uh, just swaps. Their coaching staff has been great, so you know this could go either way. Oh, really? Could I, I'm not even gonna begin to try to speculate who wins this. Uh, I'm just gonna get into it. Let's just let's just find out for ourselves. We'll we'll all figure it out together. I am so looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, CGL is just a fantastic thing, and this is just is one of the best matches that I could have I could have hoped for to come back in casting some CGL. For sure, and it looks like uh, Insidia is gonna go with the Winston dive composition with that with that. Uh, uh, Sombra that's been just doing so much damage for them and Lucky 13 is going with the Ryan Diva Torb McCree comp. So very varying different styles here. Uh, one side's going to be a get in your face with a Winston Diva Reaper kind of thing. And the other side is trying to use a Torb and a McCree to stop that. Yeah, I was going to say, if Vitality and company can rush on in, they'd have the advantage. But it's Lucky 13 taking the initiative and and really able to separate the winston rush composition and already it looks like incendia are going to abandon this yeah i mean uh i probably would they're immediately going to go to a ball diva and that really counters reinhardt but they do have the torbjorn still and the and the mccree so it's not going to be so easy to run this they just got to run it properly make sure they don't get uh the fairy doesn't take too much poke from the turret it stays out of sight of the the, the cowboy here and then uh yeah and then the ball's just got to be careful to stay away from the cowboy as well yeah you can see vitality is already taking a lot of damage hey that's just some extra ult charge the arrow pulse try to get them back in the economy because that's another thing with making these wholesale swaps with kind of the Aaron gas early they are at a real risk of losing the old rotation, and especially with Lucky winning this fight without having to spend a single one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, that's exactly what you want from fights. Let, let's win the fight and not have to use a single ultimate. Like, incredible. Uh, that's just, you know, what you what you dream of when you're playing Overwatch. Right. Uh, so, so, yeah, the ultimate economy is just hugely swung in Lucky 13's favor there. They got the lava. They got the shatter. They, they have everything except beat drop at this point, and they're coming up on beat drop. There we go. Let's say they were calling for a pause. I'm not lobby host for the record. Somebody else is lobby host. I actually started hitting my button just out of uh, <laughs> habit. Like, it's like, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not lobby host. I'm not lobby host. Uh, so a little bit of a pause coming through that one actually called by Lucky13. Um, not quite sure. Maybe a battery change or, you know, maybe a lag spike or something. Who knows? But uh, yeah. hopefully it's not a DC. It doesn't look like it to be a DC because of that excellent ult economy Lucky 13 are sitting on. You'd hate to see, you know, something like that lost just because of an unfortunate internet disconnect. Uh, so it doesn't look like that's the case. But uh, what were we talking about? What were we talking about? I mean, winning fights with no ults. Like, this Lucky 13 are in a prime position to take this opening round. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they just, ult, if they just use half their ults for one fight... And then they use the other, like two fights are going to win you this essentially. So if they can yep. just properly rotate their ults three and three, they're just going to take this map pretty easily. Uh, yeah, they're just a hair under 60% in, in capture. Uh, we'll probably hit 60 by the time the fight even breaks out. Uh, just kind of taking a glander at my screen right now. We have no swaps coming through on the other side and no ults are really close. And Incendia might get a nano this fight. And, I mean, that's, that's about it, Ray. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's not looking good. I mean, they started out on the Winston Diva. When it didn't work, they had to completely swap swap compositions, and that's just going to reset your ult economy. 
So when you do that, your composition's got to just put in work and be able to dismantle the other team without having the ultimates, and they haven't been able to do that. No, I mean, it was it was quite the uphill battle. Uh, and I, I love watching that, the what I like to call the blackout brawl, where you've got the, the Sombra and the, the Reaper. Uh, with with the kind of Winston Rush built composition, it's a fun composition uh, and it can really work. I mean, the, the speed Incendia has shown, the decisiveness. I mean, I think it really suits them. But oh, running in that Reinhardt, they they, they failed to capitalize on it, and uh, they've man, they've got a real struggle to face right now, especially running into this Ant Matrix that's currently in front of them. Two man Big shatter coming through onto both tanks. Vitality's in a lot of trouble. And uh, it's just going to get hammered down all the way back to the spawn door. Yeah, look at that. They only used, what, three ultimates there? Two. They just two. used yeah, Matrix two. and Shatter. Yeah, no, they just got, yeah, they just got B-Drop, so they only used two. So they have four. They, they could just go two and two in case they have to do two fights here. But it looks like this should be the last fight. So they can just use all four fight, uh, all four ults to take it here. Yeah, all they have back. is nano. Yeah, all they have is garage. nano. This is going to be rough. Coming up on some DPS ults. They'll get the DPS ults in this fight. Uh, but, you know, floor is lava. Keith's got a dead eye in the back. Finds two immediately. <laughs> Sound barrier is down. So the, the justice from above, just all it hits is a bunch of shields. And that's going to be a 100 to 0 victory on City Center. Lucky 13 making a statement here. Yeah, that's what happens when you lose team fights and you're not forcing ultimates out of the other team and you swap top of your composition. So you completely reset your ultimates. You didn't force them to use any to reset theirs. And there's just, I mean, ult Overwatch can come down to just who has more ultimates at the end of the day. And, you know, that just rang true there. Well, and it's it's ult economy. And yeah. if, if you're winning in the neutral and you don't have to spend any... Like, you were just banking up for success. You were just setting yourself up for success. And that's exactly what Lucky 13 did there. For sure. And looks like both teams are electing to go the Reinhardt here. Ryan Arissa on the side of Insidia and Ryan Diva on Lucky 13. So that's the major differences in the comps as well as an Echo versus a Torbjorn. Flamin's Torb has been surprisingly effective. I mean, I know Torb has crept in the meta. It's not quite as meme a pick. But look, I mean, it's, yep. Flamin's landing these Cheetos across the map right into the Dome <laughs> of Justice. I love that. The Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. I wish I could take credit for that one. But, you know, it's still a great term that I'm certainly going to use. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, but just they have high ground. They have the high ground here. Let's see how much they can do with it. But point controls, you know, in the... It's contested here, but it's in the favor of uh, Lucky 13 here. And they do get some picks here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking good for Insidia. They've got Lucky caught in this tiny room. They're able to take full advantage of it. Though they do give up that first control, waiting for Justice to get back in the fight. They're able to win the first real engagement and find their first control percentage of this map. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they didn't let Lucky get too much percentage, so that was good. Um... I mean, I think ultimates are looking slightly in favor of Vincity. I think they have slightly more ultimate charge throughout their team. But, I mean, it looks pretty even overall. So, just going to depend who can win the mid fight here with everyone basically going into a dry fight here. Well, the important one, I think, would be that Ant Matrix. Because you can use this Ant Matrix that we just yep. see hit the battlefield for Rum and Cyndia to build up the rest of your ultimates. Uh, but you got to keep your team alive. It's three go down despite the double damage. Oh, man, what a back and forth. This is a 3v3 on the point. Flamin picks up one key, picks up another in the 3v3. The Ant Matrix there from Lucky 13 just to make sure they get this control back. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem with them dropping the Matrix there. I mean, it was looking pretty shaky there for a minute there for both sides. So dropping that Matrix just to make sure that you take control, that's great. Both teams are coming up on Shatter and High Noon. And, yeah, that looks like just going to... And looks like uh, they're coming up on duplication for Insidia. That, that could be three main tanks on the battlefield. That just sounds terrifying. Dead Eye out oh, from yeah. Ned. Start things off. Shatter is going to get blocked. Oh, Inks. Oh, my goodness. That just rippled a fissure through the ranks of Incendia. Wow. And an immediate trip back to spawn. Ink, take a bow, my friend. Oh, that's got to be disheartening for Insidia. 
Oh no, just you you had a good high noon actually set up. I thought he was gonna get a lot of kills on that and out came the shatter, out came the lava. Oh, <laughs> incredible. And here comes the high noon to zone him out. Yep, tumbleweeds are rolling. Cade looking for the picks. No, no such luck. Coordinated sit part two. Oh, I love it. Uh, a little banter in chat. Justice gonna pull out a right heart of their own. Throws down a hammer's gonna find two with that. And Incendia are not going down without a fight. That triple main tank I was alluding to earlier. Second shatter of the duplicate. Beat out from Soma as well. They want this point and they want it back now, Ray. Yeah, they do. I mean, just in time for overtime to about to be kicking in. But I mean, the problem is what what cost that cost you so many ultimates. You do have shatter and window, so if you uh, you can you can win. You basically can buy yourself one fight here. You gotta hope you can farm up a bunch of ultimates while only having to use shatter window. Will they have the ant matrix to do it with, which is gonna come out immediately on this right hand side? Duratan needs to land this one here. He's gonna find two with it. Could be good enough. Shadows D Mech. Keen's gone. Ink less than half health. He's gotta have to save that shatter for the next time around. Ooh. Yeah, that could be bad. That could be. They do have a Lucio. If I was in City, I'd be sending my Lucio back to go get my yep, Reinhardt. There Soma. Yep, there he goes. Yep, they're gonna run back and grab it. Which, un unfortunately, though, they still can't hold. And City still can't get this front hold going, which they really wanted to do. That was so detrimental. Uh, and now it's kind of a neutral fight as far as territory goes. You don't have the positional advantage you had when holding the choke. And now you're trying to dance around all this lava and the tanks oh. just get melted down. Keen and Flamin once again lighten up the feed in this 99 to 85 fight. We got a dead eye there. Don't even need it. Someone gets taken down by the turret. The overtime wick burns down. And with a map five win, Lucky 13 remain undefeated in MTT9. Incredible. I I did not, ex I mean, not that Torbjorn's a bad character, but just the amount of value Flamin got on the Torbjorn was incredible. Oh, that, agreed. Agreed. I, I, I can't, you said it perfectly. Like the amount of value there, I mean, from the very opening fight, that opening pick in the very beginning, all the way down to the last Molten Core in the very end. Um, and that pick onto the Reinhardt where Insidia had won that fight. Like, they were they were holding strong. They had the economy in their favor. The old rotation was firmly in their favor. They lose their Reinhardt and have to fall back and give up that choke. That was, that was the turning point. That opened the door, and Lucky 13 came in and just busted right through it with absolute vigor and a lethality that was just unmatched. Yeah, I mean, plenty of plays from that map just stuck out to me from Flamin' on the Torb. There was the first lava where the shatter comes out and yes. just lava over all of them and cancel the high noon, gets them all. The opening pick onto the Echo, the final lava where it was looking kind of even and then it forced them to back up and they're backing up into lava and they're kind of dancing around, but they're all in lava just dancing around in it, but still dying to it. it just it, I, I've just never seen a Torbjorn get so much, so much value. Oh, I forgot to use our, look at, I forgot to use our great screen. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, Flamin's a good pick. Um, I do think their main tank, uh, Ink, was doing yeah, a good job. Yeah, Ink did a really good so, job. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I don't. I'd, I wouldn't mind if we gave it to Flamin, but Ink was incredible on the main tank as well. We'll give it a we'll give it a co-player of the match. Yeah, that's, because that's uh, Hanamura, the big point A hole, didn't give up a mm -hmm. single bit of progress in Hanamura. I think Ink's main tank play was instrumental in that. Uh, I mean, big shatters there on Oasis. That I, I can't argue with that. I'm a main tank player myself, so a little love yep. for the main tank. You, you'll never get an argument out of me on that. <laughs> for sure i'm also a main take player so you never get an argument from me on it either. <laughs> no bias friends no bias yeah no not at all no
<laughs> oh man, what a wonderful match. Ray, thanks for joining, especially last minute, like coming in to fill in last minute. Really appreciate it. Yeah, of it. course. What a fun match to cast. Congrats to, to Lucky13 on a big map five win. Kit coming through with some gifted subs. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Munching. Munching uh, kind of helped organize this and was uh, uh, hosting lobby out here and, and, and keeping everybody, keeping all the ducks in a row, herding the cats, if you would. So big shout out to Munching on top of the gifted subs. Man, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all around good time. Any last words before I send us on home, Ray? No, again, just, you know, thank you for everyone for tuning in to this just incredible match. Lucky 13 gets the big win, 3-2, as they improve to 5-0. and And, I mean, we this could be a preview of what's to come in the playoffs. I'd have to agree. I hope we get to see these two teams face off in the playoffs. Oh, but that's that's going to do it for week five. We have crossed the halfway mark. Four more weeks left in the regular season of multi-tier tournament nine. I look forward to seeing all y'all for some more of these games. I'm going to be here producing Cassie as many as I can fit in. Uh, it's been a joy to get kind of get back to my roots, back where it all started, all about the, the grassroots gameplay and the grassroots tournaments. So well, with that said, look out for each other in game and out. We'll see you next time for more CGL multi-tier tournament. Later, guys.